Hi, I'm Matt Cap, the lead artist on uh, Binding of Isaac Rebirth and the creator of Castle of Darkness, and I listen to the One Up Podcast. <laughs> Dave's here, One Up Gaming. This is episode 397 of the One Up Gaming podcast. So this is just where we'll go through the games being played this week. The 10 minutes of nothing and we'll call it a day. So I don't expect this one to be a massive long episode. But as always, we're sponsored by Games Inspired Music. Just go on to like um, Amazon, just go on to the... Spotify, anything like that, just search Games Inspired Music, it's an album, I think it's like 25, 26 pieces of music on there, there's probably about 10 music, yeah, proper songs, um, it was going to be for our animated TV show that we were producing, and unfortunately the guy who was meant to be the main star stabbed someone uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Ended up being house arrested, couldn't do his interviews and stuff. Um, and then eventually when we got things sorted, he basically confirmed he had cancer and died a few months later. So, yeah, that wasn't the best of things. But we've managed to get the full album done, so the album's out there now, just buy it. And 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. So, everyone gives... To Child's Play, uh, they're normally the ones that um, when you're doing like the you see a lot of streamers do like the 24 hour streams. It's normally Child's Play charity who sort of like benefit from those. And you can also get our first 100 podcasts available at audiobooksontape.com. And one pound of each so will go to the Diabetes UK charity. So that'd be amazing if we could get some of them done. Um, <clears throat> We do have our first collection of books available now. So we have the unofficial Sega Saturn collection. We have the unofficial PlayStation collection. And we have the unofficial Nintendo 64 collection. Now these are technically just uh, like 200... And, I think the N64 is 252 pages. And... The PlayStation 1 is 292, and the Saturn's 290, I think, pages. All full colour. Every single page has got screenshots or controllers or some sort of gadgets that are associated with these consoles. We have over 100 games uh, featured for the the magazine. Oh, it's not a magazine, it's like a book, a coffee table book. 8.25 inches by 8.25 inches, like a proper square. And each game and each um, controller, memory card, camera, anything that's associated with the, the consoles, each have a blurb talking about it and going into some detail about those, some facts, those type of things. Um, it's kind of like a old retro magazine type style. Um, each game's got two or three pictures and it's just something to flick around, have a look through. But as I say, we've got the N64, we've got the PlayStation original and we've got the Sega Saturn available. All on Amazon, so just search for them on Amazon and hopefully you will enjoy them. So we'll have a quick few seconds break and we'll be back with the games played this week with me, David One Up Gaming. Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Hello, Andy. This is Colin. I won't be able to get in there. No, 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 no. I'm sweating all big. I'm sweating all big. Still David, still One Up Gaming, and we're still here with episode 397 of the One Up Game Podcast. So, as always, sponsored games inspired music, buy it, stream it, rent it, all that good stuff, and 20% of each year will go to the Child's Play Charity. We do have three books available, and they're all between, I think the most, the two of them, 
PlayStation and Sega Saturn, they're both about 290 pages plus. And the N64 is about 252, 254, that type of number, I believe. Um, they are all like coffee table books, 8.25 inches squared. And they are all got screenshots and blurbs for the games. And they all feature like controllers and memory cards, cameras, the train controllers, all those sort of stuff. And as I say, they've all got pictures and they've all got little blurbs on. So you can flick through, look at some old games and get a sense of some stuff. So these are all available on Amazon. So just search the un unofficial and it's either... Sega Saturn collection, PlayStation collection, or Nintendo 64 collection, and they're all available to buy. And please buy them, help us, please. <laughs> we need all the help we can get. So we'll go straight into this week's games of what we've been playing this week. And there's eight games on the list, so that's not too shabby. We'll rattle through some of these games. So first of all, Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons. I had a quick go at this on the Nintendo Switch. And it's not a bad game, it's just not great. Um, it looks okay. It's got that weird look of a... Sort of one of those budget, Android-y sort of games. Um, made with Unity. I don't know what it's made with. Um, but yeah, it plays well. It functions well. It's smooth. It's, um, it's frame rates up there. Uh, animations are nice. It's probably the best Double Dragon game I've played for a long time. Um, I think it's got loads of unlockable extras, loads of playable characters, all those good stuff. So yeah, Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons, really good little game. I'd recommend it. Fun little game to play. I'd have a guess it's on the Xbox, the PlayStation, the PC. It's on all those sort of things. Uh, next up, we were playing Freedom Planet 2. Now this one, I believe it was a 2D side-scrolling platform shooter sort of game. Like the Mega Man sort of stuff. Um, it looked gorgeous. It had a bit in it where it played very much like the old Sonic sort of games. Very fast, very fluid, very smooth. Pixelated, gorgeous graphics. Um, yeah, it's a really nice little game. And there was a bit in it where you control a person on a motorbike and you fly around the level. It's amazing. And yeah, it's it's a good little game. I really enjoyed it. Freedom Planet Two. It, I don't, I've never really heard of the first one. I don't know. It's just a really good game. The characters are all voice acted, so it's got all these little cut scenes where they're all talking amongst themselves. Really nice little game. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, bright, colourful, proper, poppy, colours, saturated, gorgeous. So then, moving from that to the next one, Manhunt. Now, I played this on the PS2, I believe it was. And I've not played this game since it came out, because I used to own my own little shop called Game On in Thursk. And... Uh, we had copies of this when all the other big chain stores uh, were actually um, refusing to stock the game because of the 18 rated sort of like content in the game. Uh, so I did what any other business person would do. I ordered as many copies as I could get and instead of selling it for 35 or 34.99 like they were, I was putting it up for $49.99 and selling a ton of these, uh, which is really cool. <laughs> I know I'm an asshole, but what are you going to do? Um, the shop, I, I was there for three years. It, I, I lost about 30000 uh, I think Did I end up having a debt of £22,000? So it didn't help. I, I was knackered when that shop closed. Um, yeah. So don't sell, don't open a shop and sell stuff. It just doesn't work. Unless you can open like a lingerie store. Because you can buy things for three, four, five. I mean, there was a lingerie shop next door to us and we accidentally got sent their brochure. 
So, of course, I flicked through and they were could buy items in for like three, four, five pound. And the recommended retail price was about forty pound to sell. So they were making an absolute ton per item sold, whereas we were buying the games in for like thirty two pound. And then you had to sell them for like thirty five, forty pounds. So we were making between three and seven pound per game sold. And when you have to make four hundred pound a week just on like the rent and the electricity and all that type of stuff, it just didn't work. But yeah, Manhunt. Let's, let's get back to the games. Let's get back to Manhunt. So the games themselves. Uh, it was a 3D uh, action stealth sort of game and you have to hide in shadows, you are a convicted murderer and you're killed at the start of the game but you're not killed, you're just made to think that the guy's getting killed and then you're resurrected sort of thing within the game where you're basically... Uh, in the dark webby type things where people put bets on how many people you can kill before you get killed and the guys were sort of, uh, at the start are saying that if you can survive the night then you get released you know, for, you know into the public sort of thing you get released from the this nightmare so you're just there trying to kill people trying to not die listening to the guy in your ear as he's telling you how to kill people how to move and how to do things Considering it's a PS2 game, all the way back from about 2005, I'd have a guess. It's very clunky and chunky, but it still plays quite nice. So, it's not a bad little game. It's, it's not as violent as what it was made out to be back in the day. But I guess we were like pigtails and unicorns and stuff back then. And it's just a bit random looking at the game now. So I got sent a, a game just to have a quick look at, and that's the Pet Shop Simulator. And a quick got the demo, and this one you have to build up your shop, like uh, put your desk in and your walls in and your bits and bobs. Uh, you have to uh, order your stock. You have to go out to the front. You have to pallet the pallet in, put it all in the stock room. Then you go to the stock room and put it out onto the shop floor. Um, you actually hire staff to sit at the tills and stuff. It's very cheap looking, very simple and basic. But it is one of those games where you could probably sit there and spend quite a bit of time in the game. And it was quite, quite fun. Quite fun. Um, so yeah, so the next game that we were playing is Lotus Challenge and this one I believe it it came out on um like the PS2 GameCube and the original Xbox I think. Um it's a is it Midas Midas? sort of published game so I'd have a guess that it uses an engine of other racing games that was like loads of them probably came out and this is just a Lotus branded game I was quite enjoying it you start off and you actually get into a Lotus car do a test drive get feedback and yeah I was really enjoying it I thought it played quite well more of an arcadey feel than a sim but it was chunky it was balls the graphics were quite nice it was stable as the frame rate uh, so yeah I, th I think it was not a bad little game I was really enjoying the actual game itself so Lotus Challenge I think it's worthy of actually getting out of your collection and having a quick go on um, but yeah like I say we played it on the PS2 it, it looked nice it played nice you can tell it's an old game but it is old it is it's about 20 year old, I guess, 20, 25 year old. I guess if it came out in 2002, yeah, but like 20, 22 year old. Um, but yeah, Lotus Challenge, nice little game, played well. So next up, Stealth Blade. Now this one is, again, a bit more of a budget style sort of game. It was on the PC through Steam. 
and it's a 2D side-scrolling action platformer where it's like a shinobi style game where you're a sword fighter person you can show, show, throw shudukens or like throwing stars like what I used to call them when I was a kid and it's you're a silhouette of a black outline running through the side scrolling so it looks really nice it pops the the actual animations a little bit simple a little bit basic but it plays well it looks nice um it's just a good little game quite hard but you know that's what you want you want to get some and spend a bit of time on and that's really really good so next up for the I was going to say GameCube. Next up for the Nintendo Switch, we played The Last Hope Dead Zone Survival. Uh, this one, it's just a really bad budget third person action zombie survival game where they've nicked a lot of elements and story beats from The Last of Us. Uh, it's bad. It's really bad, but it's probably better than the bloody Walking Dead. Was it Survival Instinct? Or was it... No, what was the one where you changed the... The... You changed the... Um, some of the stories around you. Yeah, yeah, it was as if, like, if Rick didn't kill... I can't remember what his name was, but the mate, the other guy. Um, and all those sort of stuff. But uh, probably... This is probably better than that. But it's still bad. I think it's been removed from the uh, I was say Play Store, from the e store, from Nintendo Online, whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, it's it's nowhere near as bad as some of the people were making out. But it's still a bad game, and I wouldn't recommend it. <clears throat> if you can find it online, wink, wink, uh, download it, and give it a go. See what you think. But yeah, it's not great. And the last game played this week is Builders Egypt. And we played that the prologue of this. And this is like a proper full um, SimCity style build your empire sort of game. Looks really, really nice. Really crisp, clear, gorgeous graphics. But I am an idiot. I can play SimCity 89 uh, like this... Super Nintendo version, SNES version, because it is quite simple and easy to do. Whereas when I'm playing anything like SimCity 2000, where you have to get more of the water, the water pipes and all that waste sewage system working through, electricity pylons all running through, all the other bits and bobs to run through, it gets a bit too complicated for me, and I brain stops and I don't know what I'm doing. This is like that, but on steroids. It is bloody hard. It is extremely complicated. But if you are into that start of game, this is absolutely amazing. It's gorgeous. It really plays well. Great characters, great animations. And I could see this being an amazing little game. Unfortunately, I'm just an idiot and I can't play it. So that's the games being played this week. So... Thank you all for watching. It's David, One Up Gaming, episode 397 of the One Up Gaming podcast. And we're back in a few minutes after this quick break. Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming podcast. Up next on the One Up Gaming podcast is 10 minutes of nothing. Will it be the team talking about nothing or a guest interview? Stick around and find out now. It's 10 minutes of nothing. Ten minutes of nothing. Hi, David here, One Up Gaming. Gonna go through our ten minutes of nothing today. This is our one no one hundred. This is our three hundred and ninety seventh podcast. Um we've gone through the games we've been playing, we've gone through all of our new sponsory stuff. So as always, um stream or buy games inspired music, it's an album. And 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. We also have our first 100 podcasts available. And that is at 
audiobooksontape.com and one pound of each sale will go to the Diabetic UK, Diabetes UK, there we go, Diabetes UK charity. Uh, we also have our first three books available, these are like coffee table books, more like screenshots and a little facts about games and stuff. We have one for the PlayStation, we have one for the Sega Saturn, and we have one for the Nintendo 64. So they're all available, links in the description. Please buy these, let us know how we are doing. Uh, it, if you want more things, um, if you want other certain consoles, other bits and bobs, let us know what, what you want. So, 10 minutes of nothing. If you don't know what that is, it is just a little tiny segment of the show where we can just talk crap about anything and that basically just gives us a 10 minute timer so if we go over the timer that's great because it actually cuts us straight off and then that's it if we don't quite get to 10 minutes it just makes the show a bit short but it's not a big deal it's just a 10 minute timer just so we don't talk about crap for three hours which could happen it has happened before in the past um so this week's on 10 minutes of nothing we are going to be talking about the knuckles mini series that just came out um so without further ado i will hit the start button and i will hit it now um so yeah knuckles there is six episodes each one's roughly about half an hour long 25 minutes that kind of thing um and yeah it's like i mean I, I, first of all is it adam pally the the main guy he's quite good in it i really enjoyed him idris elba back as knuckles from the the movie sonic 2 uh he plays it amazingly well I, I just love the fact that he's just so straight and the stupidity of the the main guy plays so well off Idris Elba's straight faced, completely, utterly weirdness. Um, the two people trying to capture uh, Knuckles. Um, I mean, I've got the pictures up here, and I think one's Ellie Taylor and one's Kid Cudi. Cudi? I mean, like, I might be wrong, but I'm sure that this Kid Cudi person is probably a singer rapper person. Cause I'm sure I've seen that name before. Uh, Ellie Taylor, I've not seen before. She looks weird in the movie because she's got a really weird bobbed haircut. And they're all right. They're not great. They're all right. The main bad guy uh, looks like a big, hairy Scotsman. I think his name's Rory McCann. Is he Scottish? Is he Scottish in it? I can't remember. But he's a big, big, massive beard. And he just looks big and scary. Um... Then it's got the, is it Maddie from the movies? The main guy's wife, who Sonic lives with, sort of thing. She's in it because I guess that she's not a big name. Like James Madsen? Madsen? Madison? Madsen? I can't remember. But she's in it for the first episode. Ben Schwartz is in it for the first episode, where Sonic's in it. Uh, the woman who does the voice for Tails, she's in it for the first episode. Christopher Lloyd is in it, and he plays like the Knuckles is high god um, person who trying to give him advice on how to be on Earth. And I'm just sort of having a look through. The main guy, Adam Pally, um, is it Weird Whipple? <laughs> His dad in the movie is, is it Kerry Falls? Let's have a look. No, God, my eyesight's really bad. Kerry Ells. And when I saw his face and he was talking, I was just like, I've seen that person. I've seen that face. Who the hell is it? And it's the, he plays Robin Hood in Robin Hood Men in Tights. And he's amazing. I love him. Over the top, dramatic, amazing, great, 
great, absolutely great. Um, I mean, like, just going through some of the people on here, it's, yeah, it was one of those things where it's okay. Um, nothing, it wasn't amazing, it was just okay. Um, it just starts off with the, the main guy, Adam Pally, Wade Whipple, wanting to become, go to like, this bowling tournament. Uh, he gets dropped by, uh, I guess his name is Jack Sinclair, who's also a bounty hunter, but he's also his teammate and their best friends. And he drops him because he thinks that Wade Whipple doesn't have the, the balls to be a, like, a, a tournament winning ba baseball, bowling person. And so Wade Whipple decides to go to the bowling tournament and uh, Knuckles, Edris Elba, thinks that if he teaches Wade Whipple the way of the warrior, then that's the way of Knuckles is getting into, like, more getting into the world, more like living and being a part of the world. And it's him training other people and doing other bits and bobs and it's just a comedy it is a like a road trip comedy where they're getting from where they live on um, green hills uh over to is it reno is it reno uh they make fun of it all the time it's they're saying it's like las vegas but rubbish um and that's where the tournament is and it turns out that uh, weird uh, Whipple's dad is the all-conquering bit. I keep saying baseball. The all-conquering um, bowling player. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm on about. But so he has to confront him, and also you find out that um, Weird Whipple's dad um, basically just abandoned him and his family at a young age and he's got dealing with all that type of resentment and all that type of stuff and it's six episodes is perfect it's just a low budget movie cut into little sections and it's not bad it's not a bad little thing it's not amazing it's not as good as the sonic movies but i'd ever guess that they're paced better and put more money into it but the leading stars are good enough to hold the actual the movie uh i, I have to say i have to say um eddie patterson um i've never seen her before i don't know who she is um looking at some of the stuff that she's in uh resident alien violet knight Knives Out, uh, The Righteous Gemstones, all that sort of stuff. She plays uh, Wade Whipple's sister, and oh my god, she, she is so annoying. It's like if she was a real person, I wouldn't feel bad for the main guy just punching her in the face. She is so annoying. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was fun. Two, two special shout outs for the last two episodes I think it was where they're doing the bowling tournament the two commentators they're amazing, they're really fun and yeah, it's it's just a fun little series um, nothing amazing, nothing special it is just a good little series so I guess I've failed in being able to talk about this for 10 minutes but I've done a good eight minutes or so. Uh, as always, our books are available. The unofficial PlayStation collection, the unofficial Nintendo 64 collection, and the unofficial Sega Saturn collection. They're all available now. Go on Amazon, buy them. And yeah, leave reviews, leave comments. Email us at contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. Let us know what you want. Uh, it's been me, David, One Up Gaming. 
episode 397 of the What A Game podcast. Uh, this has been the 10 minutes of nothing. I'll end the timer now because it's not going to get there, is it? Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll be back with the goodbyes. So back after this quick break. Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the developer of Per Rocket, an iOS space game with cats. And I listen to the One Off Gaming podcast. You can find a link to download my game at facebook.com slash purrocket. Right, so that is the end of the show. Episode 397 of the One Off Gaming podcast of me with me, David. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. As always, Games Inspired Music, 20% to Charles Player Charity if you buy or stream. Um, audiobooks on tape.com, you can buy our first 100 podcasts. And one pound of each will go to the UK charity, the Diabetes UK charity. I missed the, the first word off. Um, please go to our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. Uh, I'm still on uh, holiday mode on Etsy, so you can't buy any of our t-shirts or hats. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, bell the, the icon on our YouTube channel, on any of the videos. If you are listening to this on uh, just a, a normal podcast, audio podcast, then please subscribe and give five stars, all that good stuff. And our books are available. Just go to Amazon and search either the unofficial Sega Saturn collection, the unofficial PlayStation collection, and the unofficial Nintendo 64 collection. So please have a look at any of those. Let us know what you think. Email us, contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. Uh, any questions, anything like that, just let us know and we'll be back next week. So thank you all for watching. It's been me, David, One Up Gaming. Thank you. Goodbye. Go baby, go baby, go baby, go baby. I love you, say I love you, never put nothing above you. Won't let go once I can hug you on the floor. They hate because you let them know that you the ish. Now they hate and I because you at the club and proving it. And so they choosing it too late because now they using it. Can't wait from how you doing it. I know that they pursuing it. You will kindly tell them now my baby's here to watch me go. And for him I put on a show. You just blessed to be here. So, uh, my baby goes, goes on, uh, her body rolls on, uh, uh, I tell her hold on, we making love with clothes, with clothes on, on, been on it so long, so long. I think we gotta, we go. gotta go, if my grown man gets, oh, you know that I love you so. Check the ring, I know that one's a throwback. I know you 
see her flashing it, especially when she they did say love. I'm rubbing on and grabbing it. I tell my girl, go, go ahead and go. Baby, go now. We got it. We got it.